<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Life on the Holes. For the last few weeks I've been Rossi's unofficial apprentice, helping him put some modules in. Um, and it's really exciting because two main ba bathroom modules are in now. Um, and we're hoping, if we get everything else sorted out, to pop the deck mould on Friday um, and then pop it on top. So it's a really exciting time. It's, Ross has been working for this, we've been planning for a long time. So I'm really, super proud of him and looking forward to it. Oh, don't forget <laughs> to like and to, or subscribe, whichever side they're on, I can't remember. <laughs> but give it a shot. Thanks, bye. Right now it's time to put this bulkhead in place. I have to rip this peel ply off. So yesterday I completed the tabbing on this wing frame here and that now has about nine layers of 600 double bias in there. If anyone questions the strength of my bulkheads, um, I'll challenge them, but that there uh, is nine layers of glass as well as the layers of glass on the actual bulkhead itself. Uh, the the uh, crush bulkhead here has basically gone off. Got a beautiful, beautiful fillet in there. Oh, I hate removing peel ply prematurely. Like I like to leave it there to the very last second, but the problem with that is, is I can't glass onto peel ply. So you've got to make sure you remove it. Um, in this case, this is going to get finished pretty quickly, so I have actually torn it off. But as you can see, that fillet's perfect. It's nice and smooth. It's perfectly laminated. That crash bulkhead is now very, very solid. And uh, this big bulkhead that goes in here is going to go in now, and uh, I'm going to. I'm going to fill it in with vinyl ester and cotton flock and then two layers of 600 double bias, one 200 millimetres wide, the next one's 300 millimetres wide, making sure that I'm getting an overlapping tabbing. So important. You can see it down here, first layer 200, second layer 300 wide, giving me two and a half centimetres of overlap on every single tab in this boat. Very important, cover it with tape or it's gonna become part of your bulkhead. And uh, we don't want that, we want some nice and neat lines here. But I've got 30 mil foam up here, so. I'm deliberately using short screws so I'm not penetrating the hole. And then they just, it just gets backfilled with uh, with vinyl ester and um, cotton cloth. But that's now in, can't go anywhere else. Has to be in place, I can lift it out, lay my bead of vinyl ester on cotton cloth sit the bulkhead in, leave it for 10 minutes, tab it. All right. So because I've got the cleats here, 
I've had to peel ply this side. The other side's a bit of a mess, so I'm gonna have to get in there, try to tab that pretty quickly because I wanna make sure I integrate the tabbing into the uh, into the fillet. Very important you try to do that. Now on this side, I'm gonna leave it just for an hour or so, just to let it set up a bit. And, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll come back in and remove the cleats once I've got the other side tabbed in and complete the tabbing on this side. Very important you don't leave it more than a few hours because you want to sort of get a chemical bond and you want the, the cloth, the 600 double bias, to impregnate into that fillet. That gives you the bonding strength. Very important that it's sort of tacky, you know, even wet if possible when you're doing your tabbing so that you're not ending up with that sort of sub secondary mechanical bond. Now, I've been dreading doing this part because I'm jammed in this little hole for a few hours tabbing in this bulky. Um, but it's made a lot easier by having this uh, crash bulkhead underneath me secured. Uh, this bulkhead here does actually need to be cut to the shape of the boat, which is around about this sort of shape. Um, but I'm not going to do that until I get the deck in here. time to do this side this is actually set up so I can remove the peel ply and my cleats and then I'm gonna have to give it a bit of a sand because it's a bit rugged before I do some but the peel ply certainly helps to settle it down just need a little bit of a rough sand that was only two hours ago and but I just didn't have the time to get the tabbing in that train of time if I had an extra worker here would have been both done but anyway that doesn't happen because I don't want anyone working in here with me <laughs> That'd be the last thing I'd want. So, the other side's tabbed in. These cleats can come out. Hopefully they'll come off. They usually need a bit of a pry. So with that forward crash bulkhead complete, I'm looking towards the stern cabin and completing a robe that will form the aft structure of the port head. A number of these partition robes are required and are completely tabbed and filleted to ensure a squeak free storage unit. Although this can be done after the deck's placed on the hull, I'm loving the overhead light and the space and I'm staving off the inevitable for as long as I can uh, while I'm working on the internal fit out as much as possible in the interest of my own comfort and sanity. I'm able to work at my own pace with this build as it is my own boat, but in a factory environment workers will be expected to carry on regardless to meet a schedule. Oh, I've got Johnny, I've got a cameraman here. It's a bit hard because I'm dead in the corner here, but I'm going to put this bulkhead in. So I've just prepped the surface, wiped it with acetone, and uh, I'm gonna fill it this in, screw it in place, let it set for 10 minutes, and then I'll laminate it in, and that'll be the end of this wardrobe for a while. Well, basically well, what stuff. else are you gonna do in lockdown? Yeah, that's right. Might as well build a boat. Yeah, this is, uh, I had a guy this week comment, I can't remember what his name was, but he said, this is like the Boardman's Mad Max of 2025. We're going to be out there running wild. It'll be Waterworld. Only I'm not Kevin Costa. Finishing the job. It makes a really solid bond to the hull and it gives it a... takes away that pressure point. I didn't need to go to the floor down there. Can you scrape it off? Well, those little cleats are awesome the way they hold it in place. Easy, is it? It's easy. Boat building's easy. You just need a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of it is easy. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Easy. It's easy, mate. You see everyone building boats these days? No. No, you don't, do you? Yeah, well, it's only easy because I've been doing it for a while. It's only easy because you want to do it. It's amazing. I hate putting bulkheads in, but when I put them in, it's very gratifying because it's like a final piece of the boat. What are you up to this weekend, Johnny? Um, 
I don't know, depending on the weather, I might go for a ride. Not that I can go very far. Yeah, we're not allowed to go very far, are you? I've only got to go 400k's down the road and there's these big gates at the border. Yeah, oh yeah, that, well that's not going to be open any time soon, is it? No. No. I think um, we'll be lucky to see that open by Christmas. Oh, look, who knows? We're just lucky we live in Jervis Bay, that's all I can say. Yeah, well, we don't go anywhere do we? No, I don't need to go anywhere. You can lock me down for the next 50 years. Oh, you can't lock me down for the next 50 years. I won't, I won't even leave the area. Why did you move from the big smoke? That's what I say yeah, to people. I've got to be honest, I'm looking what's at your the, reason? Um, what's your reason for moving? I've got friends in Sydney and they are just totally over it and they've only had five weeks. I mean, imagine those poor buggers in London. Well, you know, people like living in the big smoke. Good luck to them, not for me. I think it'll be that nice up there at the moment. Uh, it's not nice. I got out of there 30 years ago. So as you can hear, the shop banter between Johnny and I can sometimes be incredibly informative and at other times uh, not so. And it's just a good way to break the monotony of basic boat building. And who knows where the conversation is going to go. Often it's controversial, often not. Uh, but working on tedious tasks like tabbing and filleting, which can sometimes go on for days, I find I really do have a lot of time to think. And just when you thought you'd seen enough tabbing and filleting, here is the last for this episode, I promise guys. And uh, and then what I'm doing now, I'm onto the templating for the shelves. This is going to have a four shelf uh, sort of set up in this, in this robe. And I use simple... MDF strips hot glued together to create very effective templates that can then be transferred over to foam core that I've laminated previously. Now I buy all my foam just as sheets of foam. I don't actually buy pre-made ones where you can actually buy sheets of pre-laminated foam. Um, but that way I can control the weight. I'm not actually adding too much weight for unnecessary structure like shelves. It doesn't really need to be that heavy. They are fully tabbed and glassed in in place as well like I do with everything and, uh, and that way I can keep the weight down in areas where I don't need to spend that weight. I've just laminated up a sheet of 12mm foam that I had laying around. It was a sort of an odd shape and I was able to get the three shelves for the port wardrobe in the stern cabin um, laminated up, which is great. So I'm just going to cut them now. They've got one layer of 265 woven roving on each side and peel ply. They're smooth enough for a cupboard. They're going to get sanded back anyway, but uh, there's no point in putting a heap of laminates on. There are only shelves. The partitions are already in there. I just need the shelves to to form the, the bases of the uh, of the robe. But yeah, that's basically. I'm just going to cut them up now with the the skill saw and the uh, and my track saw and and get them done. And that'll be another job out of the way. It's just the last hour of the day. I always try to knock something over in the last hour to make sure I get stuff done. On knockoff time, I always like to knock off one more job. That's what I call knockoff time. If you knock off a job, it's one less freaking thing you have to do tomorrow. Shelves are cut. Let's see how they fit over in there in that uh, wardrobe over in the back there. And I'm going to uh, see if they fit. I'm sure I'm going to have to sand them down a little bit. Um, always the way. I always tend to make them a little bit bigger because you're cutting along a line that you've drawn off a template. But having these templates made this is the key it took me half an hour to make the templates you know, an hour to make the shelves this part can be finished there's a lot of work to be done in here getting them tabbed in but they are going to be solid and and the nice thing about it no squeaks i hate boats that squeak there's nothing worse than having bits of mdf gun <laughs> idea is to glass everything in you can and those that you can't glass in epoxy the bastards in anyway as I suspected, epic fail. Um, they're way too big. They're going to need to be sanded back, but the nice thing is I've got them done, so. That one's actually perfect. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> the rest is shit. But, uh, the nice thing about video is I can try it, then make it look like they fit. I don't do that. I like to let you know when I've cocked up. Anyway, here we go. Yeah, and that one's no good either. So there's going to be a bit of adjustment. You can see here, my cabinet making skills leave a little bit to be desired. But then when they go in, that's when I win, when it's perfect. No squeaks, totally tabbed in, all painted out, all nice and smooth. Uh, not all that changeable, but I don't really worry about that. Um, I've consulted with the boss and that's the way she wants the uh, she wants the shelving she wants shelving so that we can have baskets to put clothing and stuff in and the large 
cavity at the bottom is there to put a soft bag, shove it in there, and uh, we can get bigger stuff in there. But no hanging robe in this particular robe in here. We've got another cupboard down in this area here. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. And then ultimately, I'll just put the door on and hide my mess. <laughs> well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, too many cooks. Too many cooks, apparently. <laughs> I won't tell you what happened, but it's funny. <laughs> because I dropped I... the shackle in the top of the sail here, yeah. and I said, just hold the rope and don't rock the boat by coming up here. So Rosk immediately came up here and tipped the boat that way, risking the shackle falling in the water. Shackle almost went but, you know, in there. So, <laughs> yes, I dropped the shackle, but what followed on afterwards? And you know what? Because we've got neighbours, we didn't, we didn't say anything. Yeah, I didn't swear because we've got neighbours here. So. And, and, and Janet. I didn't swear because Janet's here as well. Right, uh, let's go sailing, eh? The joys of two moorings, double-ended moorings. Geez, he's doing, he's doing well with that. This is a Voyager. This is the 10.4 vert meter version. Yeah, Gary's gone over to help him. It's pretty controlled. It's the only thing, he's got to come down from the flybridge. That's why he's got the big marriage saver on the front mooring. So our mooring ground is in fact a small tidal river, or a creek as it's more commonly known. It's far too narrow to accommodate swing moorings, so we all have a double-ended mooring set up which keeps everything very orderly, but it does provide some excellent entertainment and anxiety and stress when the tide's raging, often between three to five knots, and the winds which can funnel down the channel all whilst the boaters in the community are trying to moor up. Added to that, boaters trying to pass, navigate their way through the channel at the same time, it makes life so interesting, both from a viewer's perspective and a participant's perspective. It's amazing how quickly sailing's becoming part of our regular lifestyle. We always plan to go out every couple of weeks, or every two or three weeks. Um, it's one of those activities we've been able to do right through all this lockdown period because sailing is technically exercise. I think the most exercise I did was uh, uh, handle the tiller at certain stages, but this little boat really does captivate you. Everything happens very quickly on a small trailer sailor, and Janet and I just love every minute of it. It's, uh, it's, it's just part of our regular life now and, uh, and we're in such a beautiful area, it really is a, a, a good way to get out and just clear the head, especially after all the work inside that tent. Freezing apparently. Oh, it is. No lie, it's ice cream headache cold. I reckon it's 12 or 13 degrees. It's freezing. But it, anyway. lo it looks like we're in the Bahamas when you look at the water. Oh, it is. It's too cold for fish. <laughs> <laughs> look at how beautiful it is. Alright, we've got the starboard head here. Now this one's actually a straight back unit and I've got to work out how I'm going to get the plumbing out of the back of it through this wall up, which has actually got a bulkhead, which is a crash bulkhead behind it, up into a cavity above it so that I can have a three-way valve and any um, uh, an vented siphon loop for the waste and for the return to the blackwater tank in there behind a hatch. So first thing I'm going to do here is just place the toilet in place, outline it here, cut a hole in here so that I can then have access to the crash bulkhead behind 
Then I've got to lift this head out and remount it later on once I've done all this work behind and including the crushed bulkhead plus the bulkhead on top of the crushed bulkhead has to be inserted as well. So there's a fair bit to do here. Okay, so that's the starboard head. Now, ha, I've got a problem, and it's a pretty big problem. I assume that this one and the Vetus toilet would have had the same footprint, and the one, the last boat that was made here, I think would have had a Vetus head mounted, the Vetus Deluxe head. And this is a Jabsco Deluxe head. Jabsco have a wider footprint and this head does not fit into this cavity, uh, which is a bit of a problem because that means I can't put it all the way back in to the cavity here because <laughs> it tapers back here and here, and as a result, I can't get it all the way in. So, well, Good thing about it is it gives me more content to put on YouTube because I now have to cut this out along the side here and on the other side here to make sure that this fits and then rebuild the module and then respray it, gel coat it and do all the works to make sure that this thing is going to sit back where it belongs. Plus I need to cut out the access in the back of it here which I've got to do today anyway. So there's a bit to do here, and a bit disappointing, but that, uh, that I'm afraid, that I'm afraid is boat building. It's all about chopping and changing and modifying to get the desired result. And we've got a nice big head here that clearly doesn't fit my module. So I'm not gonna move the mountain to Muhammad. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut the freaking module to pieces. So, here is my dilemma. <laughs> now normally, I could cut away and re-glass, but not in this case, because the whole side is very close to this side, it's actually up against this side, so I feel that I have absolutely no where to go other than buy another toilet and sell that one off or hopefully I can get that one back to Scott um, it's going to depend on how they feel about taking stuff back it's only just been put out of the box so who knows, who knows? 